here's a little more information about bassoon maintenance. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get a bassoon into a shop at least once a year. Um, and hopefully if that's a bassoon specialist, they're gonna do most of the lubrication that you need um, and putting oil or grease where it needs to go. But if you're concerned about uh, keeping the bassoon lubricated, um, you can use for, for the keys, um, you can use just any basic uh, light white oil. Um, I mean, if, if you have anything labeled key oil, that's gonna work just fine, or even a little bit of valve oil if you have that around and it's a nice light kind. Um, and you can just apply that with uh, the, the tip of a pin uh, like a, or, or a sewing needle to apply that uh, lightly to the keys. And then if you wanna lubricate uh, pivot screws and long rod keys, um, you can use what's called plumber's silicone grease. And you can find that near the faucets at uh, Home Depot. And again, you're probably not gonna need a whole lot of it, but uh, it's a good idea if you are worried or if you're just getting the bassoon out of the case for the first time in a long time and you can't get it sent into a bassoon specialist um, in the near future. So um, another thing that is a common mistake here would be to use silver polish on the keys. Um, and uh, the reason you don't want to do that is because that polish has an abrasive in it and it can get its, work its way into some of the key joints and the little finer details of the key work and it'll just start grinding away in there. So we don't want to get any of that in there, so just stay away from the silver polish. Uh, now you do definitely, as I mentioned, need a reed case or the student needs a reed case to make sure that they can hold their multiple bassoon reeds because they need at least two. Um, so here is the one that I've been using. And again, it didn't used to have holes in it, but has been drilled in the front and the back. And this particular one holds uh, four reeds, just three in there right now. And this is a case that Hodge sells. Um, so it, it's got some styrofoam in here and uh, they just sit in there. Uh, but it does not have any holes on it right now. And I can see a little bit through the crack in the side, so they might be thinking that that's gonna be the, the adequate ventilation. Um, I'd just test it with an old reed or, um, or just see how it goes right away, but you just wanna avoid that whole moldy situation. So you could even just drill uh, a hole or two in a new case and uh, just make sure that those reeds are gonna get nice and dry between playing. Um, one thing to keep in mind about bassoons, especially if your school bassoon or if a student's personal bassoon is a wooden bassoon, and this goes for all instruments, but uh, temperature is a big deal, so make sure that they are not leaving the bassoon out in the car overnight to get really cold or out in the trunk in the day to get really hot in the sun. Um, wood especially will expand and contract, contract, and it's really easy for a bassoon to crack uh, at extreme temperatures. So best to avoid that, and so make sure the student understands, especially because bassoons, especially once they're, um, you know, a wooden bassoon is probably gonna be a minimum of $5,000 and up. And some bassoons cost as much as $16,000, and then I'm sure that they go well on from there. So it's quite an investment. Um, if the student has their own instrument, that someday they need to be in the habit of taking really good care of their instrument, even if they learned on just a basic plastic body bassoon uh, they should be keeping it out of extreme temperature. Uh, as far as a basic swab for the boot joint and for the tenor joint, um, you're going to want to make sure that you do have a cotton or silk swab of some kind. I think silk is probably your best bet because it's not going to leave anything behind, any, anything fuzzy in the bassoon. Um, to stay away from anything that looks like a saxophone pad saver, uh, or just a large pipe cleaner, simply because not only can that leave fuzz behind in the bassoon, uh, but if you're shoving it down the boot joint uh, through that U, which is under the boot cap, uh, you can actually start scraping the inside of the bassoon or put dents into the bottom of that cap if you're not careful. Um, one thing that we, uh, you should be aware, aware of is on the boot joint, only one of the two sides <clears throat> is actually um, only one of the two sides is actually lined. So there's the two sides to the boot joint, the big hole, the small hole. And when you swab it out, you always swab from the large, oh, I have some extra cork grease on there. So if we got that, good idea to get that off. And so the large, the long joint is actually further down the instrument. So the tenor joint, the wing joint goes in here. That's where the air is going down. And then we're coming back up 
the long joint or up the large hole. So we're gonna swab from big to small to make sure that that moisture is going back the way it came, out, uh, up through the instrument, and then we're not pulling moisture further up through uh, the boot joint. And this is especially important on a lot of bassoons because there will be a lining on, um, on the wing joint side. Okay, and that, that's to help prevent, especially on a wooden bassoon, it's to help prevent that moisture from, from getting onto exposed areas that can rot. And so even just in the motion of tipping the bassoon to, or tipping the boot joint to get that weighted swab to come through, students should always tip toward the wing joint side so that if there's built up moisture in there, it's gonna sort of pour down or if it were to drip out, it's going up the lined side of the boot joint. Um, if they turn the other way and they aren't paying attention, even if they're swabbing the correct direction and there's a lot of moisture, uh, some of that water can run right onto the unlined portion of the bore or into some of these um, pads and things like that on that side of the instrument. So that's a good detail to teach your students about maintenance of uh, the boot joint and of the swab. So using a real weighted swab, cotton or silk if you can get one, and, um, and avoiding pad saver or pad saver like uh, pipe cleaners to do that job of swabbing the boot joint and swabbing the wing joint as well. Um, <clears throat> the vocal needs to be cleaned about once every six months and that can be done actually with a small regular pipe cleaner or uh, with a vocal brush, but basically you just go in one end, make sure that it's going to travel, make it, make sure it's long enough to travel all the way through. <laughs> you don't want to, your student to put their pipe cleaner in and it doesn't go all the way and they're, now they can't get it back out. Uh, so make sure that they have a nice tool for that and that you've explained how they're going to do that carefully with their vocal. Uh, so do that about once every six months and make sure that students are not planning to make repairs at home. So more than any other instrument, especially if you're trying to maintain a school instrument, um, things can really get messed up by, by dad taking out some, some hand tools at home and trying to get it done. Make sure that students in emergency situations just don't play the instrument or let you know right away. No home repairs. And um, if you're making an emergency repair, avoid any kind of rubber bands because they'll eat into uh, some keys uh, because they produce just a little bit of acid. So don't leave a rubber band on the instrument. Um, and finally, make sure that the case is in good shape. So if the case is broken and there's blocks or pieces of foam like shaking around in there, uh, get it fixed or buy a new case. But if your bassoon is rattling around in the case, it could be getting damaged just moving from place to place even if it's put in the case properly. So get a good case, it's worth the investment, it's probably a hundred bucks or less to get a decent bassoon case uh, to protect a thousand, multiple thousand dollar instrument. So those are some maintenance tips to keep in mind and to make sure your bassoonist is well educated about maintaining and caring for their bassoon. Uh -huh.